What up nerds, it's Jason here from Custom Cans and this week we're going to be showing you how to fit the new V2 version of the Sennheiser HD25 Mass Loading and Damping Kit. This will retune your HD25s from this, the stock frequency, what's it, to this where it gets rid of that weird hump and gives you a bit more bass. So, uh, which is what, let's face it, most of the people who listen to the HD25s want a bit more bass. <laughs> So yes, as you can see, this is a, one of our pimped pairs of HD25s. We sell a lot of these. I think we make about 40 a month custom painted pairs, which pretty much pays for all the product development on everything else. So thank you, HD25. These uh, actually support the business. <laughs> so yes, if you have a DJ friend who would like some custom HD25s, tap us up. So, a little bit of history. Um, we've been selling this the original version one of the mass loading and damping kit for probably 13 years and it consisted of a sheet of pre-marked damping material and a load of lead weights which you would stick on in various places and what that did is gave you a bit more weight behind the driver which gave it something to push against which helped give you a little bit more bass a little bit more sub bass a little bit more control in the bass so that it came through a bit sharper and the damping helped reduce the hump in the mid-range a little bit it only smoothed it out a little bit, but it did help a little bit. And as I said, we've been selling that for 13 years, and I don't think we've changed the price on it in 13 years either. It was £8.50 when it came out. It's still £8.50. I think we now probably lose money on it because it's £8.50 with free postage in the UK. And by the time, like, postage is £3.60 or something. So, yes, I suspect we lose money on it. <laughs> we sell. <laughs> uh, but yes, that's my own fault didn't just, I don't know, it's just a classic thing. The first ever mod kit we made, and uh, yeah, it's just stayed the same ever since. We've never updated it, never changed the price on it. So now after me doing this for years, my skills are superior and I can design a better kit. And that is what I've done. One of the reasons we wanted to do this, other than the fact that this is a very old kit and we can do much better now, is because they still use lead weights and obviously lead it's a great material, you get mass, you know, it's very dense, but it's not great to deal with. You need to wash your hands properly afterwards because you don't want to ingest any lead. No one wants to do that. So we've moved to copper like we have on many of our other kits. And it was a bit more challenging on the HD25, which is why we haven't done it. It's not, a, it's not an easy thing to mod for a sensible price. And yeah, the HD25 it has a relatively complex shape to the driver. So it wasn't going to be super cheap getting the parts made for these, but we figured out a way of bringing the costs down a bit so we can sell it for a vaguely sensible price. So our new kit will consist of copper weights. So we've had these, had these machined and they are just right. So they fit over there. They partially block these two base ports when they're attached and then they've got a gap down the bottom to leave this one open which would be to do with the tuning you need to, otherwise you end up with too much base. You need to cover that base port a little bit, but adding the weight tightens up that base. Uh, yeah, so you get two of those weights, and then rather than the Dynamap stuff, which was a nightmare, because the customer had to cut this out, which took quite a long time and ruined their scissors, because if we cut it on our laser cutter, there was a good chance of it catching fire, because <laughs> it's, it's like a tar kind of based. Thing. So yes, so that was not ideal, and for years my team have hated me because when we have to, because like we've got, we offer this as a fitting service, and it takes them probably half an hour to cut all the pieces out. There's loads of pieces, loads of lead weights. Takes a long time for them to fit it, probably half an hour. So the idea of this kit was to simplify the whole process and obviously make it better using our newer technology. Because I didn't even have the test rig; it was all done subjectively before. Whereas now I could put it on the test rig, test things, and actually get the frequency plot. The best I could. So one of the things, in case you're interested in the manufacturing process, one of the things we did to get the costs down is that we designed these weights to be flat because uh, then you can just like water jet cut them or even or CNC them. But anyway, cutting them out of a flat sheet of metal is much easier than machining down a curved section. But the, the driver itself is curved. So if you put that on there, it's just going to wobble around and it's not going to make a good thing. So our plan was to get these made flat and then bend them into shape. And that took a little while to kind of get to figure out how to do it. But this, this is the tool. So we've 3D printed this. You can put, 
put the weights in there, put that on top. And then I've designed this so it fits inside our die cutting machine. So you just pull the handle on that and it will bend four weights into the right shape, which will make us a kit. So we can, like this, because it only takes a second to do that, means that we can knock these out quite quickly. And again, it's not gonna cost us too much. You'd be surprised how much it costs just to get those pieces made, because we're getting them made in low volumes. It was relatively expensive. So in the kit, you will get four weights with adhesive tape already attached to them, ready to stick on. And four bits of foam, which have been cut so that they'll fit in perfectly. And you will get the correct pry tool to get the headphones open safely. So this whole kit, much easier to fit now and better, you know, retunes it better. But basically before I was a product designer, now I'm an award-winning product designer, which means I, I make better kits. So enough preamble. Uh, I'll leave markers so you can skip to this point. So if you're looking to fit this kit, hello, this is how you would fit the new V2 Hasty 25 mass loading and damping kit from Custom Cans. Okay, we'll start off by removing the ear cups from the headphones. You'll need to remove this wire from the top, slide the dr driver down to the bottom, pull it off, that is really set. The other side, a bit trickier, um, probably 90% of the ones out there are going to have T6 screws, so you'll need a T6 screwdriver to undo these screws on the cable clamp. If you've got a very old pair, it will be Phillips screws, but I think they've changed them in 2012. So, you know, there's still, the HC25 lasts for a really long time, so there will still be some out there from before, but most people are going to have T6 screws in theirs. And what I like to do, just to save me from losing all these little bits, put the screws back in the holes. Okay, then the same again. So we unplug the cable from the top, slide it down to the bottom, pull, Ooh, that'll come off. Okay, so put your headband and cable to one side, you remove the pads, finger underneath, remove that and the little foam dust what's it underneath as well. So remove that, there's a little dust pad, take that off. Okay, now we're in. Now then you will see on the H25 driver, uh, You've got three sections. You've got inner section, this one, this one. So you want to get your pry tool in between the very outer one and the driver. Just get that down and then raise that up. So now, and then what you want to do is slide that around the edge. Keep sliding it around the edge and eventually it'll start to go pop. There you go, pop. Keep sliding. There we go. And that's released that you'll, you'll see it pop out when it's when it's done don't press on this part there's a good chance you'll break your driver we've seen a lot break like that so yeah to do it like this i'm just going to do it again so we're going to get the pry tool in there press it press it down he says failing that's it so press it down and then lever up so that your pry tool is flat like that but still inside and just drag this around the edge. If it pops out like that, let's go again. You might need to give it a bit of a wiggle just to get it to pop up. And yeah, that's that's out now. You can remove that. Cool. Right inside, there'll possibly be a felt disc. It might be on the driver. It might be stuck inside there. Remove that. And now what we do is take our foam pieces and you'll notice that you've got kind of a left and right. You know, it only goes in one, it's the same shape as the holes that are in there. So we're gonna just work that into the holes, press all those down so that it's laying in there. You're just kind of squidging around until, they, until they're seated in there. So that one's seated in there nicely. And again, the other side, give them a little wiggle so that they all go down. Cool, all right, so that's your Damping one side, I'll just do the other side. There we go. So that's the foam, the foam inserts in there. So we're gonna remove the adhesive backing from that. And we're gonna pop this on there. So you wanna line up the edge of this with the edge of the driver there with that rounded section. So line that up. 
that will all stick down just press it down firmly you want it really nicely stuck on there so yeah it's definitely solidly on obviously you could remove this it's all reversible this tape will will come off if you pull it really hard again and that should just about touch in the middle there like that so press that all down so that's that and then you'll notice you've got a hole on the driver where the cable goes in make sure that lines up with the hole on the casing so you get it the right around and just hold this upside down like that pop that in and then press it shut um, when you're pressing it I don't think you can really damage anything but I'd press it on this ring here press there okay so do the same on this one attach the weights So yeah, so the weights basically do two things. Uh, they add, as I said, they add a bit of mass there. So if the driver's moving in and out, it can't move this as easily. It's got a bit more weight behind it. So more energy goes into making sound rather than wobbling the casing. It also braces the casing. So sticking that on firmly gives it a bit more support, stops that from flexing. Again, directing more of that, you know, yeah, tightening up your base because it's less flabby it's not like moving around it's all braced a little bit better in there so it's, it's a subtle check you know it's going to give you a bit more base and sub base and a bit more punch and get rid of that hump up in the upper mids all right so that's back together see that wasn't that wasn't too hard the hard part for a lot of people is probably getting the pads back on i've put the pads back on hc25s probably ten thousand times we've <laughs> we sold yeah i don't know we sell 40 or 50 of these a month every month for the past like 15 years so it's a fair it's a fair number and then we've done some big batches as well for for companies where they they wanted custom ones so yes i dread to think how many pads we've taken off and put back on so uh get your pad there's two ways of doing it the way i do it as a professional pad putter back or runner uh i will hook the edge of the pad over there and then i will hold it with my fingers so it doesn't come off and i'll Put the edge over like that following around holding it down once it's on and that's on that only takes me a couple of seconds as a pro that's the quickest way of doing it the other way of doing it which i, I, I don't i don't do is turn this inside out put that on there put this on there and then turn it outside in again so you can just roll that over the edge and that works but as you can see it just takes a bit longer <laughs> you know when you've got a hundred pairs of these to do it makes all the difference but yes if you're at home that's probably the way to do it you'll notice we didn't put these things back in if you put those in it won't go back together so don't put those in that's not keep those safe if you want to go back i don't know but yeah we don't don't need those anymore so there we go and then we just pop our thing you know and then it's just reverse of what we did before so there's a the turnable arm has the one without the cable clamp pop that on plug the cable in the cables have got l and r written on them and those want to face outwards so that l would face that way and the r would face out that way so if, face out the way that you can read it because uh, the pins are different sizes they'll only go in one way around but they look very similar so yeah, so just put the letters facing out okay that's that and then again with this cable clamp you can just undo one screw loosen the other one and move it to one side so if i just loosen the other one turn that around pop the cable in turn it back that makes it a bit less fiddly because you haven't got to take both screws out and then try and fiddle them back in again et voila it's all done and now if we just have a quick look at the measurements so on the sennheiser hc25 um they are very difficult to measure on a rig like this especially on the mini dsp ears because the pinner like the ear bit is quite hard it's harder than a human ear so they don't make a they don't make a very good seal on there and you have to move them around and every every slight movement will give you a slightly different reading so what i've done is i've done 
you know, like 10 readings, five with the mod kit, five without, and then you can see kind of the average of, of how, they, how they look. Let me just get that out. So if we look at the graph here, uh, this is kind of, I did a load of measurements and there was two kind of bands that seemed to match up nicely. There were some that were all over the place and I've basically taken out all the outliers and then this is what's left, kind of an average. So as you can see, all the what I've done is I've colored all the stock ones green and all the modded ones red. So as you can see on average, the green ones have got a, a hump up at about three, between two and three K, you've got quite a noticeable hump, which kind of comes through in the sound and we've smoothed that off so we've got rid of that hump using the, the the damping that's in there and then in the bass range below sort of 400 hertz you can see it it's flatter in the bass it doesn't sort of roll off as much which gives you an extra maybe four or five decibels of bass uh all the way all the way down basically so you get a little bit more sub bass you get a little more it still rolls off starts to roll off at 100 hertz but because it's at a higher level, that's not as it's not as not it's not as pronounced. As I said, you get four or five more decibels in the bass and sub bass with this mod, which especially if you're DJing in a loud environment, it's good. And it's just fun for music, you know. It's not as muddy. It's a it's a crisper bass that you get with that, just because the enclosure's been made more rigid. Yeah, I've just been having a good listen to the to a stock pair and the modded pair. You know, it's always good just to compare backwards and forwards, just to and and yeah, certainly. Most of the people that we're going to be sending these kits to are going to be DJs, you know, they're going to be buying our headphones for DJing. And for that kind of thing, if you mix on the bass, it's really good. So let that bass drum kind of cut through the sound without you have to turn the volume up really high on the headphones to prevent you from damaging your hearing a little bit more. So yeah, so it'll help that bass drum kick through. So if you beat match using the kick drum or the bass, this really helps it cut through the loud background environment. Yeah, that additional bass down low really kind of helps with these, I think, because I think that's a little bit of what they're lacking. So yeah, if you mix on the bass, it's good. If you mix on the mids, stock, they're probably a bit more mid forward. If you're using them for listening to music, again, if you like lots of bass, good. They've turned into real bass monsters, but uh, it might be a little bit too much bass if you're more of an audiophile on the go. So what you could do is just put one of the weights in. So rather than putting both in, you could remove one weight. Yeah, you can remove one weight while you're testing it. I'll probably keep these little bits that you pulled off because you could remove a weight, stick that back on, that'll stop you from getting fluff on it and you have to stick it back into place if you want to. But yeah, uh, yeah, if you're using it kind of, if you're more of on the audio file kind of side rather than the bass monster, probably one weight is the way to go and that'll give you somewhere in between. So you get a bit more bass and sub bass, but not loads of bass, like it's dirty, dirty stinking bass with the, with both of them in. So there you go, the new V2 Sennheiser HC25 mass loading and damping kit. It's good to phase out that old one. As I said, that's the oldest kit. We've been doing that for sort of 13 years and it's lead based, lead and bitumen. It's not, it's not as nice and it takes ages to fit. Whereas the new one, it's more effective. You get a slightly better frequency response. You can fit it a lot quicker and easier and no lead to deal with. <laughs> no dangerous heavy metals involved. So I hope you found that vaguely interesting. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get this kit. Obviously it's going to be a little bit more because we've had parts specially CNC machined and laser cut and stamped into the thing. It just cost, you know, probably five or six times more to make this kit than it cost to make the old kit. So yes, the price will go up. That's just that's just how it is. Deal with it. Uh, but I'll, I'll try and make sure that it's not crazy money. You know, it's still it's still going to be sensibly priced. Yeah. So if you fancy a set of these, check out the link below, and we'll be offering this on a lot of our modded headphones. If you're ordering some of our custom headphones, you'll have the option of the new mass loading and damping kit, which tunes them a bit better than the old kit. Anyway, uh, yes, it's been lovely hanging out, and I will see you guys again.